Hello and welcome to my item tier list where I'm going to be ranking the item. So I did one of these previously and I wanted to do like a quick little update for which items are the best and why. Uh, so let's start with the torch. The torch is meh. It's good on like two, maybe three chapters. There's better options. It It's whatever. It kind of helps you in some things. It's definitely not useless, but you shouldn't really be using this often because there's only like three maps you can even really use it on. And outside of those three maps, it does literally nothing, so pretty low impact item. Uh, Anti-poison, this thing, I think it's at least A tier. It's really good on tanks because if you get poisoned, you take more damage. So the more poison stacks you have, the more damage you take. So if you have three stacks of poison, you take plus five damage. So if you're trying to tank, you want this on your tanks. And if you are playing fast, you probably don't need it. But if you are just playing at like a normal speed, this is really useful to have. It heals the same as a vulnerary, but it also removes poison. So it's basically just a vulnerary, but better. Uh, you could argue maybe it's S tier as an item because it has utility, but I'll just put it in A tier. All right, the meal. The meal is decent. You can get an engage meter if you use favorite food. That's kind of nice. It's 20 HP, so it's a little bit more than a vuln. So it's decent, it's free, you know, you just cook. It costs you resources that you can't sell, so I consider it free. Uh, the goddess icon plus two luck. I would say this is like B tier. Plus two luck is plus two crit avoid, and that can be useful on tanks. It also can be useful on Anna for making you money. The higher her luck, the more she triggers her passive and the more money you make. So this can be a decent stat booster, but I usually just use it on Anna, to be honest, or maybe a tank that has low luck. Vulnerary, I would say is B tier. It's pretty decent, but obviously doesn't have the utility of the uh, anti-poison, and it doesn't have the magnitude of the launch or the potential to reset an engage meter, but it's decent. It's a serviceable heal, and if you have Saline on your team, both of these heal for 22 instead of 15, which is pretty nice. Uh, Pure Water, I would say, is like maybe high B tier, we'll say. It helps tanks tank magic, which is always good, but it also uses a turn to do so, so that's something you have to consider. So in some cases, you're better off healing uh, and removing poison or using an elixir. But it can be useful in tanks. It can also be useful in anything that just wants to tank magic. It's expensive though, so if you run it often... Actually, no, I'm sorry. If we're factoring in DLC, this is S tier. Uh, with DLC, this is S tier, otherwise it's B tier. With DLC, the Enchanter class converts all of your units into effective Corrupted. Or not all of your units, all the units adjacent. So, it's either adjacent or it's one unit, but either way you get effective corruptedness out of this, which enables itself to kill. But if we're talking about normal play, it's just B tier. A Talisman. This I mostly use to res increase on my tanks. I'll put it in low A tier. It's good for increasing res on tanks so that they can tank better, or increasing res on units who are going to be fighting mages, but usually it's going to be used on a tank. Uh, same thing with the Draco shield. Actually, you could argue these are S. These do, like on certain units, these enable like near immortality if you use all of them on like one unit, like a Tamara, a Kagetsu, uh, maybe even Pandreo. Probably Ivy could make use of these and become insanely tanky. Like obviously she has high defense and res. So these basically enable a unit to become insanely tanky. So arguably these are S tier. Then maybe this should be higher too, because the luck increase is better than these for sure. Tonics, tonics are S tier. Uh, speed plus two, strength plus two. LT Seers use them for a reason. They're really good. They accelerate your units for a cheap amount of gold, assuming you have the gold to spare. Very good. Uh, the elixir, I think, is low S. The elixir, when you combine the elixir with stuff like this, you can take a unit and just have them enemy phase tons of things, then use elixirs on themselves and then anti-poisons as needed. But Elixir enables like tanks to just hold positions by themselves with no help, and they still get kills, they just get kills on enemy phase. They get like two to three kills, maybe five kills on enemy phase, and then Elixir. Pretty good item, huge value, just heals for a lot. Also, if you're using the DLC, you can restore up to two bars, I think adjacent, of engage meter, and then if you dance that, you can reset <laughs> four allies engages, you know, almost. Give them four bars, which is pretty crazy. So, but base game, without the DLC, I think this is S tier, actually. 
a dex book. This one's interesting because it helps certain units like Tamara and Ivy a lot with their passives, but it also just helps like accuracy in general. I would say this is at least A tier, maybe low S. The accuracy is nice. It's really good on units like Tamara and Ivy because then it increases their probability of like void grasping and sandstorming, both of which are bonus damage. Uh, but on other units, it's just whatever. It doesn't really help that much. The novice SP book. Honestly, I'm going to put this in S. I'll put it in low S. You get enough of these from tier 3 and tier 4 welling that it's a substantial amount of SP that can allow you to unlock passives, so I think it's an easy S tier. The Mage Cannoneer item, so this is basically like me rating how good Mage Cannoneer is. I'll put it in C tier. It seems kind of, seems kind of bad. Uh, strength plus 2. Magic plus 2. <laughs> Boots. Alright, so why are these S tier? Damage increase on magic, damage increase on strength. That lets you hit one rounding thresholds easier. The boots lets you move. This is like one of the few ways you can improve movement. So there's two of these in the game, I believe. Maybe three. There's at least two. But boots just gives you more move, which is really useful for repositioning, for attacking, for flexibility so that you can move in between positions and help different groups. Like let's say your team is split up for a good reason. You're like attacking some objective or whatever, or like pushing some enemy position. This allows you to like split up and have the unit move freely. It also allows you to dive better, so you can dive further distances to attack an enemy or something like that. But move is always good, it's hard to get. And damage is always good, tanking is always good. These I think are like the best so far. All right, and then HP plus five Seraph Robe. I think this is worse than these because if you're getting hit more than a few times, it's more value, but if you use them, like it's still good, it still helps certain units tank. It's still really good. So you want it, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> More health is good, uh, but it's it's definitely S tier. More health means you don't die as much. You can tank more damage. That just, you know, if you factor that in with all this stuff, if you use, if you use all of these on your tanks, if you distribute them between two tanks or put them on one tank, that unit becomes almost immortal with the right build and setup. So pretty overpowered. Speedwing. It stays a little bit better than these. Fixing speed is very hard. Well, actually, no. Fixing speed. Let's see. Oh, let me do this. Let's say that. I think this is a little bit better than this, but I think this is better than that. But the speed wing is really good. Speed plus two permanently. I think there's three of these in the game. There's at least two. But you can give, if you use them on certain units to have them hit you know, doubling benchmarks, they'll become better as a result, and it's just generally pretty good. Well, it's generally really good. It's hype. <laughs> it's overpowered, basically. It's one of the best items in the game. Uh, expert book, I think is better than boots. Adept book is, I want to say here. I'd say that's fair. I think the expert book is better than boots because unlocking passives, 1k SP is a huge amount of SP and getting certain passives enables your units to one round to reposition to do whatever they need to do. So like canter, I would say is better than boots. So if this helps you get canter, that's just better. The amount of SP that these give is huge. You know, 1k SP, it's not trivial. I think, I think the 500 is worse than boots, but a thousand is a little bit better. If you get enough of these, obviously, you can just completely make crazy builds for your entire team, which is way stronger than boots. Uh, so the same is true of the 500 SP, but because it's lower amounts, I'll just put it below boots for, the, for fun, I guess. Uh, so master and second seals, uh, obviously these are really good. <laughs> I'll just put these in S tier. Those, those are good. I don't think we need a D tier. It's gonna let me, I don't think it's gonna let me do that right now. All right, uh, the enchanter thing. So basically, how good is Enchanter? Honestly, I think Enchanter is like low A tier. And then the S rank ring kind of helps. It's kind of good. It can help with um, the Allier bond. So maybe it's low S. All right, so here's the new items list. A lot of things moved up. You could argue the Pure Waters S tier if you want to include DLC. I'm just assuming it's not. We're not including DLC, but I would say all the stat boosters are except for the luck, the goddess icon, or S tier. Maybe the goddess icon's low A tier, just to be fair to it. 
I do feel like this is better. Dex book is definitely better. You could argue Dex book is low S. D tier was not needed, but here's the updated list. I've, the last time I made one of these was, I think, around when the game launched. <laughs> Maybe like a month after DLC was added. Uh, so yeah, that's it for this one. Definitely like and subscribe. Also feel free to become a channel member. We do also have a live stream Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern, where I stream different Fire Emblem games. Right now, we're starting up an FE9 chat sabotage. So chat sabotage, uh, chat can mess up the stream by having me use like bad units. So there's chat units that you can vote on. There's also super chatted units. So there's like a free option. There's like a paid thing. If you want to support the stream, you can. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this one. Peace.